This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Now that we know a little bit about attaching a camera to a path, let's have some fun. This is a file named Tunnel Camera, which can be found in the Working Files folder. Our goal will be to get the camera to shoot down the tunnel shaft going from one end to the other. Now, let's first talk about how the tunnel was made real quick. It's basically just a loft. I simply created two five-sided end gons that were then attached together, basically creating a nested shape. I then drew a helix for my path, adjusting its settings to get the shape that I wanted. It was then just a matter of lofting the nested end gon along the helix path. Now, what's real nice in the example here is that the helix that was used as the path for the loft will also serve as the path for our camera. So when the tunnel object was lofted, the nested end gon shape was centered on the helix, meaning that the helix is smack dab in the middle of the tunnel, exactly where we need our camera path to be. So our scene's helix is serving basically two purposes, the path for our loft and the path for our camera to follow. Let's get that camera heading down the tunnel. We'll select the camera, then head over to the motion column in the command panel. We'll then select the position controller entry, then right above that on the left, click on Assign Controller. OK, in the list, we'll double click on Path Constraint. Back in the right hand column, we'll head down to the path parameters, then click on Add Path. Now, the easiest way to select the helix at this point is by list. Let's go ahead and type H. When the Pick Object dialog opens, double click on the Helix 01 entry. That'll identify the helix as being the path for our camera. If we now scrub the timeline, we'll note the camera being locked down to the helix, but pointing in the wrong direction. To remedy that, in the Path Options, we'll activate Follow, then change the axis to the Y direction. Let's go ahead and again scrub the timeline, and we'll see how things have changed. As you scrub, take note the camera appears to be a little jittery as it travels down the path. We can eliminate that in the Path Options by turning off Constant Velocity. Let's now go ahead and play back our animation. Now, you can even add a little banking effect if you want it. Directly to the right of Follow, there's a Bank option. Go ahead and activate that. To make the banking a little more pronounced, we'll also change the bank amount to 3. Let's again play back our timeline and see how that looks. As you can see by looking at the camera's cone, the camera is now spinning or rotating a little bit more aggressively as it travels from one of the path to the other. Let's go ahead and activate our camera view and see how this looks. We can do that in the upper left hand corner by changing perspective over to camera or by simply using the C shortcut. Now it is a little tight quarters in our camera view here, so why don't we at least activate our edged faces so we can see the lines as we're going. Let's now play things back. Now, that might be a little bit too much to handle, getting kind of dizzy as we spin around, but it gives you kind of the idea of how things work. Here's how our animation would look if we rendered it out. The file's called Tunnel Camera and can be found in the Working Files folder for this chapter. So that'll get you going with assigning a camera to a path. Now be sure to remember the steps involved as you'll no doubt be using the technique in your own projects. I'll save this up as Tunnel Camera Completed if you'd like to look it over.